Laura. Laura. Hi, this is I'm Canlish, and welcome to another Marvelous Videos. Wolverine has often been considered one of the unique specimens of mutants. He has lived for centuries and was a part of several important events. He had numerous romantic relationships during his long life, not to mention his flings and affairs. These encounters had resulted in the birth of several offsprings of Wolverine, some of which were even unknown to him. A few of his offsprings were even cloned from his DNA, for which numerous characters in the Marvel Universe were derived from Wolverine. So with Without any further delay, let us begin today's video, where we will be exploring the backstory of every child of Wolverine to have ever existed. Before we go into our explanation, we do have a very small request. If you like our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks, and let's begin. X-23. We're all familiar with Laura, aka X-23, after her appearance in the 2017 movie Logan. In the comics, she made her debut in NYX issue 3, published in February 2004. In the comics, Dr. Martin Sutter, who was previously a part of the original Weapon X program, sought to create a clone of Wolverine. However, most of Wolverine's DNA samples were damaged, and all of his attempts failed. Later, he recruited Dr. Sarah Kinney, an expert in the field of genetics. But that only helped when Sarah suggested making a female clone of Wolverine, which would not require the damaged Y chromosomes. Dr. Martin Sutter despised the idea, but after several more failed attempts, he had no other choice. He made Sarah conceive the baby, and after nine months, X-23 was born. The newly born infant was kept under surveillance. After seven months, they started exposing her to radiation to initiate her mutant traits. They also extracted her claws, fused them with adamantium and placed them back. The entire procedure was conducted without any form of anesthesia. Sutter's former protege, Dr. Xander Rice, added a trigger scent at which X-23 went wild and berserk. Later at some point, a serial killer kidnapped Dr. Sarah's niece, following which she assigned X-23 to rescue her without the knowledge of Dr. Sutter or Dr. Xander. The mission was a successful one as Dr. Sarah's cousin was rescued safely and the kidnappers were killed by X-23. However, this came at a, a big cost as Dr. Rice terminated Dr. Sarah's services from the program. Following this, Dr. Rice began conspiring the murder of Dr. Sutter and his family secretly via X-23. The plan worked, but Dr. Sarah learned about the incident. She wrote a letter to X-23 asking her to de destroy the two pods where Dr. Rice had almost completed creating two new clones like X-23, namely X-24 and X-50. X-23 did accordingly, and the forthcoming danger was averted. X-23 united with Sarah, but just as they were about to escape, Dr. Rice confronted them and activated the triggered scent for X-23. Soon, X-23 lost control over her mind and killed Sarah. Before taking her last breath, she told X-23 that her name was Laura and also that she loved her. She handed her a picture of the Xavier Institute along with its members and a letter. X-23 was a clone of Wolverine, and she had an identical set of powers like Wolverine. Her regenerative healing abilities recovered her from any lethal wound or injury. She was immune to all earthly diseases. She also possessed Wolverine's enhanced senses, which helped her to track her opponents or even sense danger. She also had an adamantium-coated endoskeleton, but unlike Wolverine, she had only two claws on each of her wrists. X-23 was also popular because of her excellent hand-to-hand -hand combat skills and expertise in covert operations. Rays. Ray's Darkholm was the mutant son of Mystique and Wolverine from an alternate reality of Earth-13729. At some point, for reasons unknown, Ray's killed his mother and replaced her using his own shape-shifting ability. Ray's later joined the X-Men with the hope of fixing it from within, which became impossible after the death of Alison Blair. Charles Xavier II, the son of Charles Xavier and Mystique, was also a part of the team, and he eventually began despising the present X-Men for dismantling the team that his father had once created and created his own brotherhood of evil mutants with Rays and three mind-controlled beasts, Deadpool and Molly Hayes. The new team fought the present X-Men team on numerous occasions but was defeated by them every time. Eventually, Rays suggested to the team to go back in time to the point where they had not mastered magic and defeated them there. Young Charles and the rest went back in time and arrived on Earth 616. Disguised as X-Men from reality, the Brotherhood tried convincing them 
them to send the time displaced X-Men back to their original time to avert future catastrophic events. At some point, Raze was the mastermind behind the plan to eradicate humans from Earth by bringing all the persecuted mutants across the multiverse to their timeline. Created by Brian Michael Bendis and Arthur Adams, Rays made numerous appearances in the comics. He first appeared disguised as Kitty Pride in X-Men Battle of the Atom issue 1, published in September 2013, and later his true form in the X-Men Volume 4, issue 6, published on October 2013. Being an offspring of Wolverine, Wolverine and Mystique, Raze possessed their powers. He was even considered to be a superior shapeshifter to his mother, Mystique. He also possessed Wolverine's claws. Rhyme Durian, created by Charles Soule and Paolo Sequeira, Rhyme Durian was the daughter of Wolverine and Sylvie Darkness from Earth TRN 758. Sixty years ago in France, a French sorceress named Marie Darkness was forced by the soldiers of the Worm Act to summon a very powerful demon named the Truth by threatening to kill her daughter, Sylvie Darkness. Marie's ritual was interrupted by the Canadian soldiers, but the energies released killed every Canadian soldier except Logan. Logan held Marie create a banishing spell using which the demon was sent to hell, but it took away the energy out of Marie, making her perish in his arms. Before her last breath, she informed Logan that the demon would be arriving every 10 years and that the key to stopping it was her daughter, Sylvie Darkness. Following this, Logan and Sylvie stayed together and faced the truth as and when it resurfaced. The two separated and years later in 1995, Logan met Ryan Durian, while Durian confronting the truth with the X-Men. While the demon seemingly killed X-Men, Cyclops, Storm and Talisman, Ren arrived and managed to cut the demon's right arm with her claws inherited from Logan and sent it back to hell. This was enough for Logan to guess that she was her daughter. Following the events, Rain vanished and reappeared after a decade when the demon returned from hell. This time it appeared in Mumbai, in India, during the events of 26-11. Logan and Ren inferred that the only way to end the reoccurring visit of the demon Truth was to go back to hell and finish off the demon there. Ren opened a porthole and the two entered hell. After fighting several demons, they met Sylvie's spirit, who had been tortured in hell by Truth. For years. While Sylvie continued stating why the demon Truth could not be killed in Hell, the demon arrived to kill the trio. Combining the powers of Sylvie and Ren, they blasted off the demon with a magical spell. With the demon momentarily stopped, the three went ahead to the Hell of Many Doors, where each door opened into a moment from Sylvie's memory and where Truth tortured her in the past. They opened the door back to the time of World War II, when Logan first met Sylvie, but by then Truth had returned. Logan fought the demons to buy some time time, which also led to him losing his left arm. As the three managed to pass through the door, the demon followed as well. Truth encountered his older version and began fighting it, while the past and the present versions of the demon fought Rain, Sylvie, with the help of Marie, darkness of the past, and they managed to create a spell that could trap the past and present versions of the truth in a magical cage, assuring no escape. Once the danger was averted, Logan and Sylvie returned to the Stone of Eternity, while Ren embraced the past version of Wolverine, revealing to him that she was his daughter. Ryan Duran made her first appearance in Marvel Comics Presence, Volume 3, Issue 5, which was published in May 2019. Being born out of Wolverine and the sorcerer Sylvie, she possessed both their abilities. She inherited Logan's regenerative healing factor and possessed retractable bone claws which glowed blue. From her mother's side, she received the skills of sorcery and could also create portals into other dimensions. Dakin. Created by Daniel Way and Steve Dillon, Dakin from Earth 616 was Wolverine's son, born out of his Japanese wife, Itsu. Dakin had a cameo in Wolverine Origins issue 5, published in August 2006, after which he made his first full appearance in Wolverine Origins issue 10, published in January 2007. Going by the story of Dakin in 1946, during the final stages of pregnancy, Itsu was assassinated by the Winter Soldier. In in an attempt to lure Wolverine to make him return to custody in Madripoor. After the death of Itsu, Romulus took out young Dakin from Itsu's dead body. Surprisingly, the baby was absolutely fine, owing to the healing abilities that he had received from his father, Logan. Romulus left the baby at the doorstep of a wealthy young traditional Japanese couple, Akihira and Natsumi, 
who had been praying for a child for years. They named the child Akihiro. However, owing to his mixed heritage, the other families of the town secretly named the boy Dakin as a slur, and the town's children teased him as well. Later, when his pheromones began manifesting, things began getting out of hand as he lacked control over it. Soon, Natsumi began showing her dislike for their adopted son and considered him to be cursed. One night, she confessed her feelings for Akiro to Akira and also stated that she was pregnant. Overhearing the conversation about the arrival of a new child, Akihiro began feeling insecure about his position in the house. Later, after the new baby was born, Akihiro confronted his adopted mum and stated that he had killed the baby. Akihiro took Akihiro to the woods, stating that she would never return, but Natsumi ran, charging towards him with a rifle bayonet. Akihiro accidentally killed Natsumi by extending his claws following which Akihira committed suicide. Later, Romulus arrived and took Dakin refuge. He admitted Dakin to the same boot camp where Wolverine was trained, and he too was trained by the same man who trained Wolverine, Silas Burr. Silas Burr trained Dakin for nine months, after which one night he suddenly disappeared. While two search parties were sent to find him, Dakin and Romulus reappeared in the camp and killed every man in it. Later in the year 1977, Romulus revealed to Dakin the true identity of his father, stating that he is still alive. He added that Wolverine was the one who killed his mother in an attempt to stop Dakin from being born. Following this, Dakin began his mission to harm Wolverine. He spent years finding all the abandoned children of Wolverine and handed him over to the organization known as the Red Right Hand, whose sole purpose was to make Wolverine's life a living hell. Compared to all the other offspring of Wolverines from Earth-616, Dakin could be considered the strongest of them all. He possessed a regenerative healing factor and retractable bone claws like his father. He was immune to all the intoxicants and diseases and poisonous substances. He possessed superhuman strength, enhanced reflexes, stamina, and an acute sense of smell and hearing. Being trained, he was an expert hand-to-hand -hand combatant and a skilled acrobat. Rena, aka Wild Thing. Created by Tom DeFalco and Ron Lim, Rena, aka the Wild Thing, made her first appearance in the 1999's J2 issue 5. Rena was the daughter of Wolverine from an alternate reality of Earth 982, also known as the MC2 universe. In this reality, the superheroes had the chance to complete their lifespan. Many of the former superheroes, like Spider Man, Iron Man, and Logan, had retired from being active. Born to Wolverine and Elektra, Rena named herself the Wild Thing and later became a superhero. Rena was known for her rage and savage retorts that she inherited from Logan and later received extensive training in martial arts from both her parents. While in high school, she had fought a computerized assassin, a demon, a prime sentinel, and even Saberclaw, her half-brother. At some point when Loki had kidnapped many of the superheroes, including Logan, Rena tracked Loki and saved them. Hudson Logan aka Saberclaw. Hudson Logan, aka Saberclaw, was also from the MC2 universe. He was known to be Wolverine's son, but his mother's identity has not been revealed yet. Unlike Rena, Saberclaw did not choose to side with the superheroes. He tried getting Rena arrested, but the latter was saved by Spider-Girl, following which he joined the Savage Six in order to exact his revenge on Spider-Girl. He later became a part of the team formed by the Red Queen to infiltrate Avengers Mansion and defeat the Avengers. Avengers, known as the Revengers. When the group tried infiltrating the Avengers mansion, they were defeated by the Avengers and other allied superheroes, following which they were handed over to the authorities. The Revengers fought the Avengers on numerous occasions, but over time, Saberclaw left the group and sided with the Avengers. Saberclaw helped the Avengers fight against Loki's daughter, Silene. Most of Saberclaw's powers were similar to Wolverine's. He possessed superhuman strength, stamina, agility, and reflexes, along with a regenerative healing factor like Logan. Saberclaw possessed long, razor-sharp claws and fangs, which are used as effective weapons capable of tearing through most conventional materials, such as flesh, bone, wood, stone, and some types of metals. Saberclaw was an effective fighter, a highly skilled martial artist, and a savage fighter. Torrent 
The cosmic entity known as the Beyonder in charge of observing the mainstream Marvel Universe was highly fascinated by the superheroes of the Earth and their potential. The entity finally chose a group of superheroes and supervillains and teleported them against their will to a distant planet he created, known as Battleworld. The planet was stacked with weapons and technology, and the teams teleported could use them to fight against each other. After the battle was over, the heroes and villains were teleported back to their reality. However, in one such reality, Earth 9811, the war ended with the death of several entities, and even Galactus and Beyonder got entangled in the chaos. This resulted in the heroes and the villains being trapped in Battleworld forever. Wolverine and Storm were the last of the X-Men that survived the battle, and they finally got together. They gave birth to their daughter and named her Kendall. The team of superheroes and villains called upon a truce and adjusted to their new home. Many of them settled in a portion of the city of Denver that formed part of the planet and raised their children. At some point, Vincent Von Doom, the son of Doctor Doom and Enchantress, assembled a team of children, of villains, and battled the children of the heroes. Kendall Logan, aka Torrent, had also participated in the fight from the side of the heroes. However, the fight was stopped after their parent intervened. Later, the team of young superheroes used a device created by the Hulk to return to Earth. They were successful, but the reality where they ended up was different from theirs. In this alternate reality, America was ruled by the Senators, and most of the superhumans and mutants were eradicated. The kids then decided to get rid of the Senators. Torrent, like a mother, could manipulate weather and summon storms, lightning and rain. She could also create a psychic bomb between herself and the primal forces of Earth. Torrent could fly and also possess decent prowess over magic owing to her ancestors. Torrent had the capability to see everything around her in forms of energy, which helped to fight at night or in complete darkness. Most of her abilities were like that of Storm, except for her regenerative healing factor, which she inherited from Logan. Apart from all her powers, Torrent was an excellent hand-to-hand -hand competent. The Mongrels. Wolverine's long lifespan provoked him into a good deal of romantic relationships and flings, which led to the birth of his untold several offspring. Over the years, these children were found and assembled by Dakin, following which he handed them over to an evil organization known as the Red Right Hand, who trained them only to be used as weapons against Wolverine. They were named the Mongrels. However, the organization was completely aware that these new recruits stood no chance against Wolverine. The Mongrels were first introduced in Wolverine Volume 4 Issue 1, which was published in 2010. The Mongols consisted of five mercenaries, Gunhawk, Cannonfoot, Shadowstalker, Sawfist, and Fireknives. They all had a common father, Wolverine, but the identities of their mothers were not revealed except for Gunhawk, whose mother was a Canadian woman named Dolores Downing. Most of the Mongols had no special powers, and they were known for being extraordinary mercenaries and hand-to-hand -hand competence. Cannonfoot had retractable claws, along with superhuman speed, agility, acute senses, and reflexes. Gabby Kinney, aka Honey Badger among the different clones of Wolverine, which were created by Alchemax Genetics, a division of Alchemax, Gabby was the youngest of them all. All the girls that were cloned were trained to serve as bodyguards for humanitarian missions and other personnel. Robert Chandler monitored the project, and the girls were often abused by their handlers, especially by the head of security, Captain Mooney. All of them had nanites implanted into them, which were slowly killing them. After the death of six of the girls, Gabby escaped with Zelda, Bellona, and X-23, three par with the help of Kimura. Later, she armed them and sent them to exact their revenge on Alchemax. Although they had a reason behind killing their handlers, Gabby grew out of it and did not support their merciless assassinations. Hence, when Three Par headed to Paris to murder Robert's son, she wore an anonymous note to Wolverine to prevent it. However, Laura Kinney, aka X-23, responded to her note and prevented the assassination. To avoid being captured, Three Par committed suicide, for which Gabby then confronted Laura. She admitted to being the one who had sent the note, but before things could get better, Gabby set Laura's apartment on fire and escaped. She went into the sewer to meet the rest of the girls, but unbeknownst to them, 
they were being followed by Captain Mooney and his army from Alchemax. Laura also followed her and found the rest of the girls following which Bellona shot her four times in the chest. Soon Alchemax soldiers kept swarming in and Laura assisted the rest of the girls in fighting them. Laura managed to escape with the rest of the girls and took them to Sanctum Sanctorium for refuge. Later, after the nanites were discovered in their bodies, Laura, with the help of Wasp, sought to help them. Unfortunately, when they tampered with the nanites, it revealed the location of the girls to Alchemax. Soon, Captain Mooney arrived and attacked them. He managed to wound Zelda fatally, but Laura and Jan restrained him, following which Laura devised a plan to destroy Alchemax once and for all. He set Captain Mooney free and followed him to the secret bunker of Alchemax. Laura allowed herself to be killed, relying on a regenerative healing ability and taken into the base, while Gabby and Bellona switched outfits. Later, when the three managed to infiltrate the base, Bellona and Laura killed Captain Mooney. Later, Gabby encountered Chandler and stated that she wanted to kill him. However, she refrained from killing him and scared him instead by extending her claws. Later at some point, she took on the name Honey Badger. Gabby was a highly trained assassin and bodyguard. Like Wolverine, Gabby possessed regenerative healing factors, decelerated aging, acute superhuman senses, and retractable bone claws, one in each arm, owing to experiments on her by Alchemax. She was insensitive to pain. Jimmy Hudson, created by Jeb Loeb and Arthur Adams, Jimmy Hudson was the son of Wolverine and Magda Lenscher, aka the Witch, from an alternate reality of Earth 1610. Jimmy, for quite some time, was unaware of his parentage, and he even fought alongside Wolverine during the Iraq War. It was after the death of Wolverine post-ultimatum events that he learned about his father, Wolverine. The message is delivered by Kitty who insists Jimmy try unleashing his abilities. After intense focus, Jimmy unsheathed his bone claws through his knuckles for the first time. He later became the substitute for Wolverine and joined the X-Men. Jimmy's powers were similar to that of Wolverine, and he also possessed accelerated healing and telepathic resistance. He also inherited Wolverine's bone claws, three on each hand. Jimmy's endoskeleton was not bonded or fused with adamantium, but interestingly, he could form a metallic substance around his claws at will. He is immune to all earthly diseases and infections. Apart from these, he possessed superhuman strength, durability, stamina, speed, agility, and reflexes. Jimmy had a unique ability to shapeshift his claws and make them like tentacles at his will. He was an expert, competent, and owing to his enhanced sense of smell and hearing, he was an excellent tracker. Kiri Kayachi Da Kiri Kayashi Da made her debut in X-Men Age of Apocalypse issue 1, published in March 2005, created by Akira Yoshida and Chris Bakalo. Kiri Kayashi Da was the daughter of Logan and Mariko Yashida from an alternate reality of Earth 295. In this reality, before the rise of Apocalypse, Logan and Mariko Yashida had a romance, which she later resulted in the birth of a girl child. Logan was unaware of her existence, and Mariko gave her the name Kiri Kaya. After the destruction of Japan, she joined the X-Men, and Marika joined the Human High Council. However, it was revealed how she became the property of the evil geneticist Sinister. Later, after the fall of Apocalypse, she was rescued from one of the containers in Sinister's old labs by Magneto and the X-Men. However, the X-Men were no longer a team of superheroes and were government-sanctioned bounty hunters assigned to capture all the mutants that had previously allied with Apocalypse. Kiri Carr was trained by Magneto, who later used his abilities to fuse adamantium into the endoskeleton. Following this, Magneto sent her to Canada to find Logan and convince him to come back. She arrived before Logan and explained her origins to him. She even helped him take down the former minions of Apocalypse. North Star and Aurora, following which he returned to America with her. Later, in Uncanny X-Force issue 12, Wolverine traveled to the Age of Apocalypse and met Kiri Ka. Wolverine was unaware of her origins. She was later killed by an evil version of Wolverine. Kiri Ka's powers were similar to that of Wolverine. Jade and Scotty Logan, created by Mark Miller, and Steve McNiven, Jade and Scotty Logan were from an alternate reality of Earth 807 
128. In this reality, most of the superheroes were killed by an organized attack by the supervillains. The world was divided into territories where notorious villains ruled, and a few of the superheroes that were alive lived in despair. One of the territories was ruled by Hulk, who had then gone crazy. Hulk also had his children, and together they extorted money from the inhabitants. Wolverine was also one of them, and at some point, when he could not pay the rent for staying in Hulk's territory, also known as the Hulkland, the Hulk unleashed his wrath upon his family. Wolverine then was a living, a simple life with his family, and the only thing that he cared for was their well-being. In dire need of money, he assisted Oldman Hawkeye in one of his missions, during which the Hulk's children killed Wolverine's children. Jade and Scotty Logan. When Logan returned and found his family killed, he went berserk and killed every single offspring of Hulk and even Hulk himself. Only the infant Hulk offspring was left and he rescued that baby and raised him on his own. Brian and Mari Logan. Created by Howard Mackay and Ron Lim, Brian and Mari Logan were the children of Logan and Mariko Yashida from Earth 1298. The two siblings were showcased in Mutant X issue 28. The issue revolved around a berserk Wolverine, which resulted from several experiments on him by Weapon X. The story begins with a group of hunters and their dogs charging the forest of Canada who encounter Wolverine and Sabretooth and die a ruthless death. Although Wolverine appeared, he was more on the run and Sabretooth, who killed the hunters, was after him. Later, Wolverine appears stealing food and clothes from a house. A little girl appeared before him and asked if she was their daddy. The little girl was Mari Logan, and she identified Logan via the many pictures she had seen previously at her home. Before there could be any further interaction, Logan felt Sabretooth closing in and left immediately, leaving his claw marks on the refrigerator. Later, Sabretooth kidnapped the entire family. Logan later rescued them and left his kids with Havoc while going after Sabretooth, who had then kidnapped both Jean Grey and Marika Yashida. Sabretooth was later taken down by Havoc, who managed to send a low-wave pulse directly into Creed's adamantium bones and burn him from inside. Kate Howlett, created by Jerry Conway and Ryan Stegman, Kate Howlett, aka Shine, was the daughter of Wolverine and Jean Grey. Young Kate was introduced in Amazing Spider-Man, Renew Your Vows, Volume 2, Issue 6, published in April 2017. The issue showcased an alternate reality of Earth, 18119, with Peter, who had then raised his family with Mary Jane. They had a daughter named Annie Parker aka Spiderling, who had recently helped her parents defeat the Mole Man. However, it became very difficult for Peter and Mary to balance their superhero lives and their normal lives, for which they planned to send Annie to Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters. Upon reaching there, they met Kate Howlett, aka Shine. Shine and Annie became good friends, and later when Magneto captured the two following an attack on the X-Mansion by his Brotherhood of Mutants, Shine used the powers of light protection to save the day. Later, after eight years, an older version of Shine is shown to be completely grown up, with superior control and mastery over her powers, as showcased in issue 23 of the same comic book series. Shine helped her parents battle Mr. Sinister. Shine possessed the ability to generate and manipulate manipulate psychic light, with which he could either reveal lost memories or blind her opponents. The psychic lights could also be used as concussive blasts. She inherited her mother's telepathic abilities as well as the power of precognition. Erista. Erista was introduced in the first issue of Wolverine the Jungle Adventure, published in December 1989, written by Walter Simonson. The issue concentrated on Wolverine's encounter with the Tribe of Fire a hunter-gatherer society based in the Savage Land. At some point, Wolverine, in pursuit of the man who had previously tried to assassinate him, flew over Savage Land and dropped his lighter that Nick Fury gifted him. However, the tribe believed it to be a gift from God. Later, when Wolverine arrives on the Savage Land, the leader of the tribe greets him as their god. However, they wanted to test him and make him engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the leader itself. Although the leader managed to put up a decent fight, Wolverine was victorious. The leader was then revealed to be a woman in armor known as Gach. Gach. 
gave up her title as the leader of the tribe and offered herself to Logan along with the leadership of the tribe. Logan wanted to explain why he was not a god, but before he could do so, Gacht bedded him and stayed with him. Later, after Wolverine left, Gacht gave birth to a child whom she named Erista. The baby's existence was unknown to Wolverine and Erista has never really appeared in the comics since then. Kuen, created by Jock, Kuen was a clone of Wolverine who made his appearance in Savage Wolverine issue 9, published in October 2013. The story begins with Wolverine being sent to an unknown planet by an unknown enemy. Wolverine struggles to survive in the harsh conditions of the planet, along with vicious Denzians constantly attacking him. After a while, a boy was sent to kill Wolverine, but the boy chose to side with Wolverine to escape the planet. This boy was a clone of Wolverine named Kuen. It was not revealed who was behind it, but the mysterious person was known to be looking for the creation of a master race. Wolverine and Kuen searched their way out of the planet, during which the two bonded. Later, the two went on to destroy Wolverine's other imperfect clones in a shady lab. Kuen had similar powers to Wolverine, along with the adamantium-coated endoskeleton and claws. Adopted Children of Wolverine was Hulk Jr. In the Old Man Logan story, when the members of the Hulk family killed Wolverine's family, he went on a rampage and killed everyone responsible for it. After killing old Bruce Banner, known as Pappy Banner, Wolverine rescued baby Bruce, the youngest child of Bruce Banner. Wolverine traveled with the baby across the wastelands. Wolverine feared that baby Bruce would also grow up to become like his father and siblings, but this fear was later vanquished when baby Bruce defended Logan against Pappy Banner who was then nothing but a head in an adamantium mecha suit. Later, after growing up, Hulk Jr. joined the new Defenders along with Wolverine. However, their world, Earth 807128, was facing ecological devastation. The new Defenders defeated their Galactus and used his body to make a godship. They used the ship to travel back in time to Earth 616 and resettled there. Hulk Jr. was last seen in 2012's Fantastic Four, issue 609, fixing the godship to travel back in time further to rebuild their reality. Amiko Kobayashi Created by Chris Claremont and John Ramita Jr., Amiko Kobayashi was the surrogate daughter of Wolverine. She first appeared in Uncanny X-Men issue 181, published in February 1984. After the heroes and villains of Earth-616 were done fighting for their Beyond the Secret Wars, they were sent to Tokyo instead of their respective homes. One of the dragons from Battleworld had also returned with them, which after reacting to Earth's condition, began growing humongous in size. Amiko Amiko's mother was killed during the rampage caused by the dragon, and before dying she made Wolverine promise to take care of her daughter, Amiko. Wolverine took the responsibility, but being a full-time member of the X-Men, he could not take care of the child. Amiko lived mostly with Wolverine's fiance Mariko Yashiada, and got to see Logan occasionally. Later, after Mariko's death, Amiko was sent to a new family, as disclosed to Logan. But the family was abusive, unbeknownst to him. The money Logan had been sending for Amiko was stolen by her parents, and they did little to nothing to care for Amiko. Later, at some point, when Wolverine began losing his healing factor, he thought he would be dying, and so wished to bid farewell to Amiko. However, when he reached, he learned about the truth and made the parents run away in shame. He then sent her to stay with Yukio with the Silver Samurai, providing financial aid. Cameron Pride, created by Marguerite Bennett and Mike Norton. Cameron Pride was the son of Kate Pride and Peter Rasputin from an alternate reality of Earth 25158. Cameron Pride made his first appearance in Years of Future Past issue 1, published in June 2015. Cameron was born just before the Mutant Control Act, which restricted all surviving mutants to camps under Baron Robert Kelly's order. When Kate was taken away by the Sentinels, Wolverine took Cameron to safety and raised him without revealing to the child the truth about his parents. While Cameron was roughly 17, he met the remaining X-Men along with Wolverine and managed to escape the camps. Cameron's sister, Chrissy Pride, was also present, but both of them were unaware of the truth of being siblings. Unfortunately, owing to long political unrest involving mutants, Cameron began believing the mutants to be disease, and the only way peace could be restored was by eradicating the mutants. Following this, Cameron tried taking the life of Baron Robert Kelly, which would strengthen the Mutant Control Act, but he was killed by his sister, Chrissy Pride. Marvelous Verdict 
Scott. Wolverine was undoubtedly one of the best creations for the Marvel franchise. Innumerable plot-changing events revolve around Wolverine. The Weapon X program was one of the pivotal events in the franchise, which gave birth to numerous characters and parallel stories. The same thing goes for his children. The man who has lived for over two centuries would also have many relationships, and owing to his nature of frequently getting drunk at bars, flings and affairs are also common. This gave birth to a different offspring, who later became critical and powerful characters in the Marvel Universe. With this, we finally come to the end of our video, and we hope you found it entertaining and informative. And if you liked our content, then don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.